Christ's command to his followers before his ascension to heaven was for them to be his witnesses in Jerusalem, all Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. Our Lord did not intend for the good news of his death and resurrection to stay local, but instead it was to be taken globally. In this third section of Acts, the adventure continues as the gospel is taken to the ends of the earth. Let's join Scott Pauley now for today's study. If you've ever done any baking, and I must confess in our household, that's not my contribution. That would be my wife's. Uh, but leaven is something that is very important because it permeates the substance and it is influential. It causes the thing to rise. In Scripture, leaven is used as an object lesson, and it's always used in the negative. In fact, Jesus identified three types of leaven in his teaching. He talked about the leaven of the Pharisees. That was hypocrisy. Remember, they were uh, religious hypocrites. Then the leaven of the Sadducees. That was false doctrine. They didn't believe in the resurrection and the supernatural. And then there was a third type of leaven, and that was the leaven of Herod. Now, that's interesting because... Remember, we started talking in our last study about King Herod, uh, one of the members of the Herodian dynasty. Uh, he was a politician through and through. We've learned that already. He was brought to the end of himself. He was, he was uh, brought to judgment. He met God, as all people will. Every nut and knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Uh, but what was the leaven of Herod? It wasn't about the, the person it was about their influence. If the leaven of the Pharisees was hypocrisy and the leaven of the Sadducees was false doctrine, then the leaven of Herod was worldliness because the Herods, the Herodian dynasty, that whole family was full of worldliness. And the spirit of Herod, uh, frankly, exists in every generation and in every nation, and it always has to be dealt with. Uh, Jesus used the picture of leaven because it's a little thing that has a big influence. And this particular uh, dynasty, this group of leaders, uh, permeated so deeply into the culture. Sound familiar? Into the very fabric of the society that they promoted immorality and debauchery, uh, sins of the flesh and sins of the spirit. And frankly, the root sin of Herod was the same as the Roots into the Pharisees and the Sadducees, it's always pride. Pride produces hypocrisy. Pride produces false doctrine. Pride produces worldliness. It all begins with us. And so let me read to you again Acts chapter number 12. The Bible says in verse 21, Upon a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a God and not of a man, and immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not God the glory, and he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. Let me show you uh, what the leaven of Herod is. May I? First of all, the leaven of Herod is rising when we concentrate more on man's voice than on God's word. There's a great contrast because as soon as it finishes telling you what happened to Herod, the next verse, verse 24 says, but the word of God grew and multiplied. Friend, I want you to know there may be people who are good talkers, who think they know what to say and how to say something. There may be orators who can use their uh, rhetorical skills to hold an audience spellbound and to persuade people. But I want you to know something, that if they're not speaking truth, it matters not what's coming out of their mouth. We need to think more about God's word than we do man's voice. Don't get enamored because someone knows how to talk. Uh, there, there's a danger even for those of us who talk so much uh, that we think we know what to say and how to say it. It's not our voice that matters. It's God's word. See, Herod thought uh, more about what others saw. He should have been thinking about what God saw. Herod thought more about who he was over should have been thinking about who he was under. Herod thought more about how well he spoke instead of whether God's truth was being given. Forget his apparel, forget his throne, and forget his oration. The only thing that lasts 
is the word of the living God. It is forever settled in heaven. And so think less about man's voice, more about God's word. Uh, This is the leaven of Herod that must be guarded against. Another mark of the leaven of Herod, uh, the leaven of Herod is rising when we get more consumed with man's reputation than we do with Jesus' good name. Oh, friend, when we get to thinking it's all about what people think of us, in fact, you can, you can read more about Herod all through uh, the, the historical record, and you're going to see that this is a man who just wanted glory to go to him. Even the, even the temple in Jerusalem uh, that one of the Herods reconstructed, he named after himself. It wasn't a temple to Jehovah God. He let the Jews use it, but it was Herod's temple. Why? It was for his own glory. And friend, I just want to remind you, he will not share his glory with any other. And so Herod's name may have been powerful, uh, powerful enough to put James, John's brother, to death and to jail Peter. But I want to tell you, there's no name like the name of Jesus because the name of Jesus is what delivered uh, Peter from that jail. The spirit of Herod, I'm going to tell you what it is. It's the spirit of Antichrist uh, instead of. In, in the stead of who God is, human substitutes, drawing people to themselves instead of pointing people to the Lord Jesus. So the leaven of Herod is rising when we concentrate more on man's voice than on God's word. It's rising when we're more consumed with man's reputation than we are Jesus' good name. And the leaven of Herod is rising when we're more concerned with receiving praise than we are giving glory. You understand that we're supposed to be givers and not takers. We're supposed to be giving glory, all the glory to God. We're to be worshipers, not worshiped. A true worship always leads you to God. And that's why Herod had to die. Do you know why Herod had to die? Herod had to die because he had to be removed out of the way so that everyone would get their eyes back on God Almighty. Remember in Isaiah 6, verse 1, it was in the year that King Uzziah died that Isaiah saw the Lord high and lifted up. I've often wondered about that. Does God have to get us out of the way so people can see God? Is God going to have to remove uh, certain people in our own lives so that we finally realize it's not about those people, it's about the Lord? Uh, This this man, Herod, uh, was all about his own good name. And I'm going to tell you, we ought to be concerned about God's good name. Uh, Not them saying, what a man, no, what a God, what a Savior, what a Christ. Uh, Bring all the glory to Christ alone. Who cares what other people say? What does God say? What will he say in the end? Friend, if you really want to see God's blessing on your life, then you must get not only hypocrisy and false doctrine out, We must get this worldly mentality that it's all about us out of our lives. We must get the leaven of Herod purged from us so that God himself gets all the glory. The last verse, and we'll pick up here in our next study, but the last verse of the chapter says, And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry and took with them John, whose surname was Mark. Do you know what's getting ready to happen? The adventure continues. For the child of God... For the servant of the Lord, for the obedient, humble minister, the adventure goes on. Uh, The only one that it came to an end for was the one who tried to make it all about himself. Uh, Let's live and labor today so that all the glory goes to the worthy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you will see that his adventure, his work continues. Though no more scripture is being written, the story of the furtherance of the gospel is being written at this very moment, and we get to be part of that story. The heart of our Savior is as passionate for the lost today as it was just before he ascended in Acts 1. Will you get in on what God is doing in the world today to reach the lost with the gospel? This is why enjoying the journey exists to encourage and to equip you in the work of the gospel. Whether it is through the daily broadcast or the many resources on our website, Scott and all of us on the Enjoying the Journey team are passionate about people coming to know Christ as Savior. We pray that you truly will enjoy the journey. 
But we also pray that you will bring others with you on your journey of following Christ. 